Now, how not to pick up women? Lazy man, and she claims that the uh, that she can always spot a man who lies. Uh, how much money he makes? About how much money he makes? Please welcome Deborah Vance. Oh. Hi, Deborah. I almost got all those things out she said. Almost. Have a seat here. How do you how do you know if some guy's lying to you? Well, his shirt. Well, for example. His shirt. Well, I used to live in Crown Del Mar. I used to go to a happy hour in Crown Del Mar. Mm -hmm. And a guy would start boasting. I don't care what he makes. Just don't lie about it. He'll start talking about his cars and what he makes. And I'll say, Dad, I look at his shirt, and it's like 50-50. Cotton polyester, or let alone 100% polyester. <laughs> and that's like a dead giveaway, because if he had 100%, you have to wear money to make money. And you look nice. You, you <laughs> so you, you always can tell when someone's just um, talking and someone's not. I cover up all. I got holes in this sleeve right here. I do. I have three of them. I just noticed it before I put the shirt on. I'm not too, I wouldn't have told anybody. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> have you dated a lot of lazy men? I mean, guys that just won't get out of bed? Uh -huh. <laughs> not exactly what I meant, but... Uh, well, they don't, they don't start out telling you know me they're lazy. I, mean. I know what you mean. I didn't take it that way. They don't start out that way. They start out, yeah, let's go water skiing. Let's go skiing. Let's do this. I love to do that. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, we start getting into a relationship. I think, nah, I've met a guy who can match my level because I like that thing. So not, they don't start out lazy, but sometimes they just end up being unambitious. I'm just that worn out myself right now. <laughs> Let's take a look at the uh, men that Deborah had to choose from. Remember, you're going to pick the man that she thinks best for her. All of a sudden, I'm talking very fast. First, it was Mark. In his free time, he likes to work on his car, practice German, <laughs> and refinish furniture, okay? He says that the first thing he notices about a woman is her legs, even though he claims that looks aren't everything. Here's a little bit more for Mark. And I definitely prefer someone that's intellectual as opposed to someone that's just great-looking and stupid because that really doesn't get you very far either. Okay. Next, there's Stephen. He's raising a three-year-old daughter, and his hobbies include jogging and reading. He admits that he likes to flirt, and he says that he's looking for a woman with a lot of, quote, get up and go. Well, there you go. <laughs> I have plenty of time to do things. I want a lady that wants to maybe go skiing, to say, give her a call, let's go, and, you know, be off, that she can take off and do it, you know, that she's not bound by anything. All right, finally, Dennis, in addition to his regular job, he holds down two part-time jobs. One is a race car mechanic, the other is a bouncer at a nightclub. He thinks that uh, today's women are too independent for him, and we asked him if any women had any kind of complaints about him. They tell me I'm, I'm a perfectionist, you know. I like things, you know, just right, you know. I don't take out my ski boat on the weekends unless it's washed and waxed and polished. You know, I like things just right. And, and they're, like, they're like, God, I've had too many people tell me, they tell me, you're such a perfectionist. Why do you like that? Uh, that's just the way I am. <laughs> All right, those are the three men Deborah had to choose from. Time for you to vote. Who do you think would be the best man for? <laughs> All right, everybody's locked in. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll meet the man that Deborah selected. Hear everything that happened on that date. We'll do it in two and two. Be right back. Up. is going to tell us who she selected. Mark. Mark. All right. We haven't seen each other since the day of the hour. We're both tired. So, Mark Hopkins. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chuck. How you doing? How you doing? Fine. Yeah, me too. I'll just make yourself at home back there. Welcome to the show. And Deborah will get us started. Well, we, we finally connected. Uh, he came to my home, and I was, uh, he was supposed to be there at 7.30, right. and I had a very rough day at work. It was an 11-hour day versus a 13-hour day. I was frazzled, and I walk in the house at 7.14. He wasn't due till 7.30, and he got there at 7.15. I needed the 15 minutes. Yeah. So I walk upstairs to the phone ring, I mean the doorbell, and I'm like, that, that's not be him. Were you just in kind of a bad mood, generally? I was just, I was frazzled, and I just wanted to relax Frenetic. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's a wind down. Did you tell she was in that kind of mood? Yeah, Chuck, she seemed like she was in a bad mood at first, but uh, as soon as I pulled the flowers out from behind my back, she seemed to warm up a little bit. Oh. Hey. And then what happened? Um, then I just said, you know, seat yourself. I sit down, I need well, to Well, what did you ready. think of when you saw him? Did you think, well, this guy's in my way? Or no, did you think, no, no. you what a nice-looking um, guy, and I'm lucky, or what? I didn't get a chance to really look at him very much at the beginning. I wanted to get ready. I was in my business clothes. I just wanted to let my hair down. Mm. So I did. I sat him down, and I went upstairs and let my hair down, basically, and came back downstairs, sat down, and he had this grin that was very disarming, and I 
relax, and I got to absorb that he was uh, very good looking, and that I said, well, my goodness, I might enjoy this evening after all. So you got all, you just absorbed him there on the spot. <laughs> How'd she look after she changed? She looked sensational, Chuck. After she changed, she had let her hair down, she put on a pair of jeans, a casual blouse, and she really looked hot. Mm. <laughs> there was absorbing and looking hot. <laughs> so now what happened? Sat down for a little bit, uh, got to know each other briefly, and then we drove off to a very romantic restaurant up in the hills. Mm. Oh. So we got some yogurt, and we started eating, well, I started eating it, and it, like, fell on my shirt. And it was Can't seem to keep things off your clothing. Or, uh, did you clean this off, or did you help her, or what? I kind of leaned in and licked it off, Chuck. And I figured... I'm assuming this was on your shoulder or something. Yeah, it was like right. Oh, good, yeah. yeah. Well, just point yeah. it right out there. So, uh... So, so is, there, is it romantic at this point? I mean, you guys holding hands, are you enjoying each other, or just is it kind of platonic and nice? It was very, very enjoyable. Is it electric? There was a... <laughs> is this going on? See, I wasn't like I am right now. Right now I'm rested and I feel good. Oh. I was really tired. So she was. was. She was very quiet. tired. I was, normally I could keep up with you, no problem, mm. vice versa. But I was just, I was really tired, and he want, he really wanted to go all out. Let's go out, get a midnight movie or something like that. And I'm like, I have to be up at 7. Well, so, how'd the date end? Uh, the date ended, we went back to my house, finished the yogurt. I walked him out to his, uh, his vehicle. Car. VW van. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a police report at this point. <laughs> it wasn't a car. It's a, it's a very nice VW van. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very well done. And we walked him out, and he gave him a kiss, a little tongue. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it was a nice kiss, Chuck. Yeah, good night kiss, yeah. and then um, he said good night, and that was it. And I'd like to say that he knew I was at work the next day, and he dropped by some computer chocolates and stuff, and a very, very warm note. Some computer chocolate. I'm not even going to get into that. Let's take a look through the audience, big boy. You sound like you had a good time. You knew you were tired. <laughs> well, they picked Stephen, 56 percent. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Thank you for that. Anyway, if you'd like a date with Stephen, we'll pay for it. If not, you're on your own. You can do what you like. No. 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 So. Mark, will you go out with me? I'd be happy to. Oh, come on. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. We enjoyed having you both. Stay in touch. Let us know how you're doing. Wait. Thank you. All right. Going to come right back with our next guest right after this. Our next couple.